Hey everybody, it's Adam Claremont back again with another quick tip. And this time I wanna show you some of the options we've got in our edit window. Now, some you might know, some maybe you don't. We'll figure it out together. And if you like videos just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified every single week when these videos are released. And please, please, please drop a comment, even if it's a hello. All those comments really, really help me out and it means the world to me to hear from you. All right, so let's dive in now and we'll get to the video. All right, everybody, so here's my Pro Tools screen. I wanna to talk to you about these seven buttons right over here under your edit window. Now, I'm sure some of these you know and possibly maybe some you don't. So let's just dive right into it. This first one, tab to transient, okay? Uh, basically, with this installed, or with this installed, with this instantiated, every time we tab, it moves to the next transient in your audio. Why is this helpful? Well, it gets us to where we wanna go quicker if we're gonna try and make an edit at the beginning of a transient, say a kick drum, or here's a, you know some speech, you know, maybe I'm trying to cob together some speech. Makes things go very, very quickly. If it's not instantiated, what happens? Well, we tab to the beginning of each clip or the end of each clip. See how far that goes? So that's what that's all about. You probably knew that one. I like to leave it on. I very, very rarely take it off. That's just me. All right, let's go to the next one. So the next one is one that I do like to keep on, link timeline and edit selection. If anybody has a reason why this should be unlinked, please let me know because I can't think of a good one. <laughs> but I, I like to learn. So if you can figure it out, please drop a comment and tell me what what is your usefulness of unlinking this? You know, because if we unlink it, basically if we make a selection here, you see the timeline isn't uh, selected. So when I press play, it starts here instead of back over here, right? I can't figure out why that's helpful. Would love to know though. All right, moving on. This one, I actually only recently learned this one maybe a year or two ago. And it, for whatever reason, it, it's kind of a game changer to me. So this is linking the selection with our tracks, right? Or is it called actually? Link track with edit selection, right? So what happens is when I make a selection over here, everything I've selected gets selected within my tracks. If it's off, I make a selection and that doesn't change, right? No change. So why is this a big deal to me? Well, you know, if I wanna grab a group of tracks, like let's say these two dialogue tracks, I gotta select this and then I gotta hold shift and press click. Or if I wanna get a larger selection, like from up here all the way to the bottom, I gotta click that, hold shift again and click. Or with this on, all I gotta do is just really quick, you know, grab my group and I'm there. Also, the way that I use solo, I can just grab a grab a selection here, hold shift, and now my solos are on. So if I want to grab a group of the, to solo, it's just really quick and easy, you know, boom. Anyway, I love it. Maybe you knew that one. When I finally learned that one, though, it was a big deal to me. So hopefully, same to you. All right, moving on. Uh, what else we got? What is this guy? Insertion follows playback. This is the biggest pain in the ass to me. So when it's on, you know, when I press play, our cursor is moving. And when I press stop, the cursor will stay where the playback head stopped. I don't like that. I like to leave it off. So when I press play, I want the cursor to uh, bounce back to where I initially pressed play. And it's a pain in the ass because this stupid end button is the quick key to turn it on and off. If you ever wondered how to toggle this on and off. So if you've ever been like me and wondering why does this thing keep on turning on and off for you, it's because you're accidentally hitting N every time you hit spacebar. So maybe you didn't know that one either, maybe you did, but what a pain in the butt, right? Anyway, N, who knew? All right, so moving on, uh, what do we got? Automation follows edit. Now this is really, really big deal to me. So for example, this is a you know template that I've got for a podcast recording. And this is the music that I have at the tail of the podcast. And for my template, I've already got my fader move, my volume automation written for this clip. But the clip is going to change in time for every podcast. You know, it's not going to it's not going to stay exactly at whatever time because the podcast vary in length. So what I did was I got this little sync point, so I know at the very end of my dialogue that's where I want to move this clip. So check it out. This is exactly the move that I want every time. So when this is on, you see my automation here, my volume. When I move it over here and I line up my sync point to the end of the dialogue, now my automation follows. Now if I didn't do that. Let's say this was off. If I did not do that, then every time I move this to the place it needs to be, now I have to rewrite 
that volume automation. I don't want to do that every time. That's a pain in the butt. I took time to write the automation for a reason and I want to keep it. Maybe I want to move it, but I want to keep it. So anyway, make that guy blue and you'll be set. And also drop me a line in the comments if you understand why this is the only button out of all these seven when it's off, it's orange. The others just turn gray. Don't know why. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this is MIDI mirroring, I believe it's called. I don't know why the label won't pop up. But let me show you what this is. This is kind of cool. All right, so when I have MIDI mirroring on, right, for my clips, I duplicate my clip. If I go in here to notes and I delete a note, it's mirrored in the duplicated clip, which is kind of cool if you think about, like, if you've got some sort of loop going on in your arrangement, but you want to change the loop, instead of then going to the next place that it occurs and copy, paste, copy, paste, it's kind of done. Now, it'll really screw you up if you don't remember to turn this thing off after you're done making that change. Um, but I, I thought it was a pretty cool one, you know? Maybe, maybe you've got a better use for it. Let me know. And then the last thing I'll show you, which is also pretty cool, layered editing. Now, this off, normally the way that this works is when we're moving our clips around, if we ever overlap a clip and pull it back, see how that clip uh, was deleted underneath where, where we left it, right? A big chunk is gone, right? So if we bring it back, and if we turn layered editing on, I can bring it over in Pro Tools to remember what's underneath it. Isn't that kind of cool? So let's check this out. What we can do is bring this under here, and we can move it around. So. I think that's pretty useful, actually, especially when you're maybe like trying to line up dialogue again, making a dialogue edit, and you're trying to sync something up, just just nudging something in there. Like, let's say, for example, like, you know, you want to move like a laugh in somewhere, like there's a cheesy laugh and you want to make a better laugh and you want to put it between two words, you know, like if, like, let's say that's our laugh just for whatever reason, and we're going to replace this little laugh, like you can just get it just right, you know, and you can move it around and you don't have to like worry about like trimming some stuff out. So anyway... There's your quick tip. You probably knew some of those. I bet you maybe you didn't know some others, and I'll bet you you've got some uses for them that I don't know either. So if you've got a cool tip for me, leave it in the comments. Let everybody see. I'd love to get that conversation going. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Please leave us a comment. It means the world to me, and I'll see you on the next quick tip video or any other video. All right? See you next time. Bye.